everybody. I am Sam Feifel. I am here uh, as this month's host of Portland Rising, uh, brought to you by the Portland Phoenix newspaper, right on the streets, uh, in your grocery stores, all over the place, all over Southern Maine every week. I am the music writer for the Portland Phoenix. And uh, this week, uh, this month, this time for Portland Rising, uh, right here on the Portland Media Center, we are going to be talking about my favorite songs of 2021. Uh, now, I know it's 2022, and you think, why would I want to look back on the shit show that was 2021? The reason you want to do that is because it was a pretty damn good year for local music. Uh, a lot of people trapped in their houses. I'm not saying it was like a great year for bands necessarily, um, but a lot of cool music was made, uh, and I really enjoyed listening to it. If you don't know, I write about music for the Phoenix every other week. Uh, usually I review albums, I talk to bands, I talk about trends in the music industry, but it's always about stuff that's happening in Maine or being done by Mainers afield. Uh, so you can read that right there in the Phoenix. You can read it online at portlandphoenix.me. And uh, without getting too much into things, I want to just give a little caveat here about what this Top 10 is all about. Uh, the founder of the Phoenix Media Communications Group way back in the day, uh, Stephen Mindich, who uh, founded Boston After Dark, he once told me when I was a young cub reporter to never thank anybody in public because the few people that you thank won't really care, but everybody that you forget to thank will hate you forever. So just say, hey, thanks, everybody, and that'll be good. Uh, and that kind of holds in the music industry, right? For every 10 people I say put out a great song last year, obviously there's 60, 70, 80 bands here in Maine that are going to think, oh, how come I'm not on the top 10? And that is not what this is about. It's not about choosing winners or losers. It's just about saying that I happen to find these 10 songs pretty awesome. I only have so much space to work with in a printed newspaper. So we got 10. However, should you want to listen to more of these songs, I did put together a playlist that you can find on Spotify, which is, yes, run by an evil billionaire that doesn't deserve any of the money that he has and completely and totally rapes and pillages uh, musicians like myself and all of my friends. However, it's a pretty convenient platform. And uh, on that playlist, which you can access if you search Sam Feifel, all one word, S-A-M-P-F-E-I-F-L-E, -E, uh, you will find it there. And there are... 73 bands that released music in the last year, in 2021. I picked out, well, there's probably more than that, but I found 73, whatever. Uh, I picked out what I think is their best song of the year. I put it on that playlist. I'm sure there are more. If you are a band who think you put out a pretty good song last year or are going to put a pretty good song out in the coming year, by all means, send me an email. It's at the end of every single one of my columns. Uh, you can find it if you are good at the internet or if you know how to pick up papers, send me an email, tell me about it. I would love to listen to your music. Believe me, I am not excluding you in any way. It just means I have no idea you exist most of the time. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about these songs. I'm going to tell you why I like them. Then we're going to listen to like 30 or 40 seconds of it. And then I'm going to tell you about the next song. Hopefully you have the wherewithal to go and find these songs on your own on the internet. If you do want to be friendly to these bands, I would suggest that you go to a place called bandcamp.com and search for the name of that band. And uh, while they don't get much money for streaming, you can buy their music there and they get half of all that music and on, on all that money. And on certain Bandcamp Fridays, you can get all of the money, which is crazy. Giving musicians money, whoever thought, it's just amazing. So uh, I would totally encourage you to do that. So without further ado, I'm going to get into my top 10. You know, uh, drum roll, all that nonsense. Uh, the first song that I'm going to tell you about is by a woman named Genevieve Stokes. Uh, first heard about her, I don't know, maybe a year and a half ago, the people at the uh, uh, Maine Music Academy, Maine Academy of Modern Music, Maine Academy of Modern Music, ma'am. Uh, they told me we got this amazing high school kid doing crazy stuff. You got to hear her. Uh, this year, she put out a song called Surface Tension, uh, amongst a bunch of other songs uh, that you're going to hear in a minute here. And 
you know, there's this dream state quality to it, this quietness, this thoughtfulness that I just don't think should be possible uh, from a 19 year old woman. Uh, the depth of emotion um, and care that she puts into this just is way beyond her years. Um, and she also has this great phrase that opens it. I'm missing, um, she's missing people that she's never met. That's the phrase. Oh my goodness gracious, almost couldn't remember it. Uh, which is just amazing. Uh, Cause that's just this, you know, COVID experience that we're in here, right? Like we're mourning for people we don't even know. We see these, you know, stats on, from Dr. Shaw, oh, 25 Mainers died of COVID yesterday. Who are these people? They're just this, you know, random number that makes you sad. Um, and she somehow captures that exact emotion for me in this song. So this is my number one song of 2021. Here it is, it's called Surface Tension by Genevieve Stokes. Missing people I've never met. These things in this town I'd rather forget. But I just keep on moving. There's no point in losing. I just keep refusing. Oh, I just keep on proving. Nothing is quite true and everything is fluid. Wasn't that amazing? Uh, I wish I could play all of it here, but this show would be like, you know, five hours. So number two song is by an artist uh, who calls himself Ben's Ben Dead, all one word. Hopefully you've heard of him. Uh, he likes to work with uh, someone else that you've probably heard of before, which is Dave Gutter, lead singer for the Rustic Overtones. And what they do is they put together these, I don't know, I call them like songs from the future. They just have this out of time quality to them. They skitter, they move around. Ben's voice in falsetto has this, you know, really just ethereal quality to it that, um, I don't know, like infects you. And uh, he's become, you know, wildly popular beyond uh, the state of Maine. Uh, both uh, he and Genevieve are seeing streams in the millions, which is great. It's good for people to know that, you know, there's Maine has local music. Um, but, uh, you know, I try not to call it local music. It's just music it happens to be made in Maine. Uh, and it's great that people are enjoying it well beyond our shores. So this song that I picked, um, it's called Feels Like Dancing. Uh, you'll probably figure that out by the chorus, but uh, just, I mean, impeccably put together. So here it is, Ben's Been Dead, Feels Like Dancing. We are lucky, very much so, to have Ben's Ben Dead uh, in the state of Maine. I think he's up in Lewiston, Auburn. I don't know, he's from there anyway. Um, but also down in Biddeford, we've got a guy named, calls himself right now, R.A.P. Ferreira. Uh, a lot of people might have known him as Milo. Uh, I think his real name might be Rory. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, what I love about this dude is that he does not care in any way what you think of him. Uh, he is fearless. He always says exactly what is on his mind. And he makes music that is like fiercely intelligent. Um, it just uh, blows my mind, uh, the ideas that he comes up with, what he works in, his love of the beat poets, his uh, ability to mix and match genres, and just the, the affect that he brings to his delivery. It just seems like it's effortless. It just like rolls off his tongue every time. Um, these are the kind of songs that you can listen to over and over again. He actually put out two full albums of new material in 2021. Um, the song that I picked is it's, it's one of a lot of songs. He's not a guy who puts out a lot of singles, right? So this is a little bit of a incitement for you to go listen to his whole album. This one is called Red Guard Snipers. Uh, when you listen to the full uh, track, you'll hear that it 
actually is kind of split in two and there's this silent portion and then it comes back and it's kind of much more sinister and serious. Um, but this first portion is, it's kind of like a sort of low simmering soul R and B number. Um, and, uh, just really makes me want to, you know, dive into, you know, literature from the 20s and 30s or something. I don't know uh, what it is about it. Uh, but anyway, this is R.A.P. Ferreira, and the song is called Red Guard Snipers. I know you are, but now's the time for doing. Now's the time for choosing, leveling up, the overflowing of cups, the filling of treasure chests, the perpetual yes and dress shoes, the ripest of vegetables. That's what I be munching on, because I'm a... Sonic geometry, the language of frequency, so come and frequently do naked science, frequently a new earth filled with new verbs, canonically bumping speakers sounding superb, and we burn a new herb, locked into the nether sphere, constantly in a trance, but we never fear, okay, well, maybe just a little, but I swear that I would steal the devil's fiddle and make him cut a rug right down the middle with new slurs, new verbs, new curves, new nouns, new sounds, new pounds. Okay, one of the very few bands that we do have in the list here um, is a trio uh, calling themselves Weekend Friends. Uh, sometimes you have to say it as Weekend Friends. I think maybe they used to be Weekend Friends, and now they're Weekend Friends. They added an A, they took out an E. Uh, either way, um, fronted by a woman named Sonia Storino, who just is, for me, an absolute and total revelation. Uh, the amount of energy and vibrance that she brings to just this anger and disdain for the world uh, is, an, uh, is an incredibly intoxicating uh, combination. Uh, she's aggressive. The band is musical. Uh, they're also sort of populated with these kids who went to uh, Berklee School of Music uh, and Annie Hoffman, uh, the bassist, uh, you know, works at Zipper Recording, which actually just, um, I think, had a, a really terrible fire. So if you want to look up Zippa Recording in Boston and throw them a couple of bucks, uh, you should do that. Um, but anyway, so it is this great combo package of, you know, searing emotional delivery that's also incredibly well executed um, in the studio. And every single detail was completely locked down. They worked on this basically for the entire year. Uh, so they turned every knob and just the way they they cut off uh, all stops, the way that they come back in from all stops, it's like, um, you know, just incredibly well executed. Uh, again, I could have picked a bunch of songs. Uh, their album this year, Quitter, I think is probably the local album of the year. Um, the song that I picked is called Everything is Better. Um, I love that sentiment. Uh, everything is better when you're not around. Uh, just a great way to uh, diss somebody. Wouldn't want to be that person. Uh, um, but anyway, uh, I think you'll enjoy it, especially if you are in a mood where you need to vent a little bit. I think you'll very much enjoy Weekend Friends, Everything is Better. I mean, isn't that song, I mean, I don't know, I wish you could hear the whole thing here. We don't have time again, uh, but there's so many times where it just like slams in. Um, similarly well executed is our next song uh, by a rapper named Spose that I'm assuming you've heard of, probably the most famous rapper in Maine, which is, you know, a little bit like being, you know, the tallest person, uh, I don't know, in the short person party. I don't know, that's a terrible metaphor. I couldn't even come up with one. Doesn't matter. Spose will come up with a metaphor or an analogy that's better than mine. Uh, he put out this uh, amazing double record uh, in 2021 called Get Rich or Die Ryan. His real name is Ryan Peters. Uh, the first album is an ode to uh, kind of classic alternative rock of the 90s and early 2000s. Uh, the sort of thing that you used to hear on CYY, and I guess you probably still do. Um, when they're not playing, I don't know, sports or whatever they're doing. Um, and anyway, uh, the second album is all sort of classic hip hop, which is what, you know, kind of Spose made his bones doing. I picked a song that I think is just, you know, the perfect tonic for uh, when you need a little pick me up. 
Uh, this is a song, another collaboration with Dave Gutter, by the way. Um, it's called Motherfuckers Bring You Down. And it's, you'll hear, I give a little bit of the open and don't quite get into the motherfuckers let you down because when I recorded it, I wasn't sure if we could swear, but it doesn't matter. Um, Cause that open where the, it's just this crisp delivery leading into this little story about, you know, his mom texting him and just believe you me, the very next thing when Dave Gutter comes in with, don't let those motherfuckers get you down. It's much better than me singing it. I promise you that. Um, it's great uh, in a way that, you know, just in the, the juxtaposition of the rap and the rock and the horns and the R&B, um, really well done. Not like anything else that we're hearing in Maine right now. Uh, Suppose continues to be the guy that pushes the envelope, one of the most creative artists I've ever encountered. And, uh, you know, he just deserves a lot of praise for the ambition that he put into uh, this double album. Uh, I can't remember a project like it recently. All new music, um, incredible amount of collaborators. He even actually made up that double jewel case that kids won't even remember where you like flip it open from each side and there's a disc in each one. And you were bound to have one of the discs fall out and get scratched and be ruined at some point. But CDs don't really even and exist anymore. So I don't know why he did it just because he wanted to, because it was cool, because the double albums used to like by bands, you know, by Smashing Pumpkins used to put out double albums. Um, maybe you have a CD player still, you should get it. Otherwise, just feel free to stream it, which is just as good. Um, but don't take my word for it. Go listen to Spose's Motherfuckers Bring You Down. Three, two, but quit, don't fit me. Even though these dickholes diss me, I drop my new shit and they go, this ain't it, chief. They never top 10 list me, but pass me the hocks and the whiskey quickly. Cause lately I've been going crazy. I've been freaking out. I don't even know what's got up into people now. Life's a sci-fi. The next like song is uh, by a guy in Chris Moulton, now calling himself Christopher Beggars, maybe so calling himself Beggars. I think he's sort of trying to figure out what the name is going to be. I hope he just goes by Chris Moulton because uh, that's what people know him by. People might remember him as the singer of the Cambiata about 10, 12 years ago, one of the better sort of, I don't know, what do you call them? Hardcore, not really sort of, uh, you know, screamo, emo type of stuff. Um, great, great band. If you haven't heard of the Cambiata, go find them. Um, he has kind of gone away and come back and gone away and come back, had some issues here and there. Um, but I'm glad that he's still making music because he put out a record called Elephant uh, last year that is just an amazing vocal performance, amazing display of songwriting. Um, he is a truly talented kid, less of a kid now, probably in his 30s by now, which makes me feel old. Uh, but um, somebody that you really need to listen to, uh, the song that I listen to all the time is called Like Swans. Uh, it's kind of an old country vibe, um, like a Ryan Adamsy thing, but with a little bit more grit, a little bit more sort of meanness to it. Uh, you'll hear uh, in the last chorus where his voice breaks. Um, it's one of my kind of favorite parts of the album. Uh, but don't take my word for it. Listen to Christopher Beggars Like Swans. In uh, Midcoast, Maine, I know uh, many of you are in Portlandia if you're watching this, um, but if you go up into the wilds of Midcoast, Maine, right outside of Brunswick, there is a farm, and living on that farm is a man named Sol. Uh, Sol was an original member of the Live Poet Society, which was making rap albums in Portland in like 1997. He moved to San Francisco, he moved to Spain, he went all over the place, decided that society sucks, which of course he's right about. Um, kind of dropped out of society and uh, is like growing his own vegetables and I don't know, slaughtering animals and stuff uh, on a farm outside of Brunswick. Uh, I am going to visit that farm at some point. I need to see this happening. Uh, you know, COVID ends at some point in the future, 2027, whatever that happens to be. Um, but if you are looking for someone who could be the conscience of Maine, Soul is the guy. Um, there is not a better political thinker in this state 
uh, has just an absolutely searing vision for the evils of capitalism. Um, and he infuses everything he does with that ability to just see through the bullshit in what I consider to be a truly amazing way. Uh, I picked a song of his uh, off uh, the album he put out last year called I'm Riding. It has a chorus to it. It is very sing-alongable. Uh, it's probably, you know, you would hate me to use this word, the most commercial song on the album, trying to get you guys infected with this dude um, because uh, he will enlighten you, he will make you smarter, and you will enjoy it at the same time. Highly recommend uh, checking out Soul. This song is called I'm Ride. Anything does. Okay, next up is someone you've probably seen uh, around town, maybe not known who she was. If you see Renee Coolbrith walking down the street, I guarantee you took notice of her. Uh, one of the most stylish and recognizable people in the city of Portland. Uh, she has been making music here for easily a decade. Uh, often you'll hear at a as a backup singer, she's been on Spencer Alby records, she's been on Spose records. She's worked with Lady Essence back in the day. Um, she is someone that you've heard her voice uh, many, many times. I'm sure you were always captivated by it when you did hear it. Uh, but now she has put out a uh, record in 2021 of solo songs that she fronts, and it is a revelation. It is the album that many people have been waiting for her to make for a long time. It's called A Killer Name, Sugar. Um, it is incredibly well executed, um, down to the song organization, the thematic content. Um, the song that I picked here is called Kiss the Sky. Um, uh, and I'm just a sucker for sing-along choruses. And this is the most sing-alongable chorus on the record. Um, you'll hear the kind of crystalline quality of her voice. I think one of the true vocal talents that we have here in Maine. And uh, this is a song that she put together for uh, a friend that passed away. Unfortunately, we have uh, multiple songs uh, on the albums that I'm talking about here about friends that have passed away. Um, and unfortunately, it does often uh, create that impetus to make true uh, works of art. Uh, I think the emotional depth in this song is really impressive. It's a song that I put on uh, when I'm looking to feel nostalgic or when you know I'm going to be in my cups a little bit. Um, Whatever you're doing, I think this song uh, will find a way to kind of get you emotional and get you thinking about people uh, that maybe you've lost. Uh, so again, this is Renee Coolbrith, and the song is Kiss the Sky. Okay, coming back is something a little bit more uplifting, I would say. Uh, hopefully you've had a chance to check out the Mallet Brothers Band over the last, I don't know, 10 years or so. Fronted by Will and Luke Mallet. They are indeed brothers, son of Dave Mallet. Um, and uh, early on, because they play like acoustic instruments and they have a fiddle, uh, they were sort of pegged as a bluegrass band or something. I've seen them uh, defined that way, kind of like Ghost of Paul Revere was called the bluegrass band, uh, very much not a bluegrass band. And uh, I think most people would call them a rock and roll band now. Um, and they put out a song uh, on their album called uh, Gold Light. And it's called Living on Rock and Roll. Clearly, they consider themselves a rock and roll band. What do you know? Uh, and I just love this song because I, I really feel for uh, musicians. Like, yes, I play in a band, but I don't make my living that way. Um, there are a lot of people that make their living with music that just got truly and royally fucked in 2020 and 2021. Um, and 
they sat there and they looked at more canceled uh, New Year's Eve shows. They saw, you know, their livelihoods over the next years spiraling away from them with Omicron. Um, and this song, Living on Rock and Roll, is just a great sentiment about why they do it and why they keep doing it. I think, you know, artists don't make music because they want you to give them money. They make music because they don't have any other choice in the matter. Uh, that is what they are sort of programmed to do. And, you know, whether it's because they're the son of David Mallet, country music star, or whatever it is, the Mallet brothers just ooze this demand of themselves uh, to play music. And uh, Living on Rock and Roll just like beautifully channels uh, that sentiment. And it also, I, I love the song construction of it as well, the way that they kind of clip the chorus with the Living on Rock and Roll piece. Um, just the, you know, the kind of rolling cadence of it. Uh, and plus the blood harmony that they have right from the jump uh, in duet is just really, really spot on. Uh, so again, this is the Mallet Brothers Band living on rock and roll. This last song is by, I guess they're a band, they're a duo. Um, it is a guy named uh, Jeff Badger who lives here in Maine and his partner uh, in Vermont, I guess he is, I think. They trade, you know, kind of pieces of songs back and forth and they call themselves Custard Paws and Mr. Freezy, which I'm assuming are like the names of their cats or something. I, I don't really care. Uh, I like the name. I would like to say Custard Paws and Mr. Freezy. Uh, rolls right off the tongue. And as our 10th song here, and as kind of a close to this playlist, um, I picked a song that they made called All I Want to Do is Leave the House. Uh, again, we kind of opened with that sort of pandemic emotion uh, of surface tension with Genevieve Stokes. And now we're closing with that pandemic itch uh, to get out of this sort of box that we've been in uh, for whatever going on 18 months. And I get that's not a universal experience. Some of you, you're like, oh, what? Pandemic? I don't care. I'm just living my life, which is good for you. Um, but I think most artists, most musicians are you know, very sympathetic, empathetic, uh, emotional people. They feel these things really strongly. Um, they have been doing their best to stay in the house, to you know, be good citizens, to you know, take one for the team while all their shows and all their revenue and all their ability to kind of make their music even together. Some bands didn't even rehearse for a year. Um, and the way that Custard Paws and Mr. Freezy have taken that sentiment and put it into like this daft punk dance song uh, that you're about to hear a snippet of, uh, I just think is incredibly impressive uh, because I can get so excited. I can get emotional. I can get revved up by this song. Uh, but I can also tap into that like cynical... Uh, just anger that comes from that emotion of all I want to do is leave the house. Like, you know, especially for artists, there's probably a lot of artists there that tell you that they don't even like people. Um, and yet this experience has kind of forced them to recognize that they're social animals, that they, they need to network. They need to hear other people's music. They need to kind of, you know, listen and learn in order to be able to make their music. I know a lot of artists have been kind of in, you know, right block because they don't know how to kind of get that new experience to drive them. Um, but so I love this song. Again, take a listen to a clip of it. It is Custard Paws and Mr. Freezy. All I want to do is leave the house.
Okay, so there it is. 10 songs. Uh, if you have made it this far into the program, uh, you know, 10 points for you. You are clearly either uh, super stoned or a lover of local music and maybe both, which would be wonderful for you. Uh, I appreciate you spending some time with local music here. Um, these are my 10 favorite songs. That doesn't mean they'll be your 10 favorite songs. Hopefully you found one song, two songs, three songs uh, that make you want to dive into a back catalog to make you want to learn more about that artist, uh, to get you excited to go to a show when we're going to shows again. Um, if you can, you know, buy some merch from your local music people, uh, you know, help them out when they ask for it. If they do a streaming thing, throw something in the tip jar. Uh, a lot of these uh, music makers are suffering and uh, anything you can do to help them would be much appreciated. This is going to be a dark winter for a lot of us uh, who can't play music uh, outside, which is where it's safe. Um, hopefully you're vaxxed. Hopefully you're boosted. Uh, that's how we get back to more local music. I was naive enough the last time I was on this program a year ago to think that maybe we were almost on the other side of this. I thought the vaccines were going to make it. Um, why people wouldn't get a vaccine is beyond me. Uh, I like feeling safe or safer. Um, and uh, hopefully we get back to live music again pretty soon. So coming to the end of the program, I want to thank you. Uh, again, you can go and find big playlist on Spotify. Uh, it's at the bottom of the column that I put up on portlandphoenix.me. If you search my name, Sam Fife, you find all my columns. If you go to the little artsy tab. I'm sure you'll find my latest column right there and you can dive in deeper. Um, support your local businesses that advertise in the Phoenix. Uh, support the Portland Media Center when they come asking you for money because you're not going to see this kind of content about local music on like CNN and MSNBC and big time spendy channels that you get on the stupid cable crap. Um, this is uh, what community is all about. Uh, really appreciate their support. Really appreciate the Portland Phoenix. Uh, always providing a space uh, for local music. And I appreciate all of you out there in TV land or the internet or wherever you are uh, for listening this long and for listening to local music. I hope you have a wonderful uh, 2022 and uh, hopefully I'll see you out at the show sometime later on. <laughs>